Hello everybody, Miss Debbie here. Uh, thank you for joining me today, maybe tonight, for This is Bedtime Stories, um, coming to you from the New Providence Library. Welcome, welcome. Hope you had a wonderful day, and we're going to have a great story time. I have three really good books that you've never heard before to read to you tonight, so let's get started. Hello everybody, how are you? How are you? How are you? Hello everybody, how are you? How are you today? I'm fine, I'm having a pretty good day. Um, sometimes I have cranky days. Do you have grumpy days or sad days or hurt, hurty days? <laughs> we all have days because we're just little human beings, that's all. So. Maybe you had a day where mommy took you to the babysitter's house, the nanny's house, maybe to your friend's house, grandma's house, grandpa's house. Well, you weren't home, that's for sure. So this song is for you. Sometimes my mommy takes me over to my friend's house to play. Sometimes she's gone a little while, and sometimes she's gone all day. But my mommy comes back, my mommy comes back, my mommy comes back to get me. My mommy comes back, she always comes back, she never would forget me. I like that song, I used to sing that to my own kid. <laughs> all right, let's do Thumpkin before we get into some stories. All right, ready? So you make two fists, put them in your lap. Our fingers are going to meet and greet each other. Where is Thumpkin? Where is Thumpkin? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away run away they must be very shy because after they say hello they run away maybe you do that too it's okay we're all shy a little bit where is pointer where is pointer here i am here i am how are you today sir very well i thank you run away run away where is tall lady? Where is tall lady? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, ma'am? Very well, I thank you. Stride away. Stride away. Where is ring man? Where is ring man? Here I am. Here I am. How are you today, sir? Very well, I thank you. Run away run away where is pinky where is pinky here i am here i am how are you today dude very well i thank you skip away skip away all right shake your hands out shake your fingers out rub them a little bit maybe play the piano a little bit Ooh, play the upside down piano that's that's a good one i learned that in yoga ah your fingers need, they need some stretching out before we go to bed. They've worked hard all day and now they're going to have some well-deserved rest. So our first story tonight is called When Bluebell Sang by Lisa Campbell Ernst. She wrote the book and she illustrated it. That means she made the pictures too. This is published by Bradbury Press. New York. It's, it's kind of an older book. Um, it was made in the year 1989. That's a long time ago. When Bluebell Sang. On hot summer days, cows often gather together in the shade of large trees. Most people think they are there to stay cool. The real story, though, all begins with a cow named Bluebell. 
Have you ever taken a ride in the country and go past a cow farm and you'll see these are milk cows. See, they have udders. These are milking cows. And they all gather under the shade of a tree. Are they there to stay cool? Long ago, when she was young, Bluebell the cow seemed no different than any other cow. She lived peacefully for years with a farmer named Swenson, his wife Hazel, and the usual collection of farm animals. One day, though, on his way to the barn, Swenson heard beautiful singing. What's this, he asked, opening the door. Who's there? It's me, Bluebell said. And then she began to sing again. Her voice was sweet and clear. Merciful heavens, Swenson whispered. He ran to get his wife. Yeah, Hazel said, hearing Bluebell. It's the most beautiful singing I have ever heard. And here he is looking in the barn. I guess that's Bluebell in the middle. Can you see? She's lifting her throat in song. I wonder what she's singing. Maybe she's singing Frere Jaca. Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. That's all I remember of that song. Maybe you can help me out. Well, excited, Swenson loaded Bluebell onto the back of his wagon and headed for town. Go ahead, Blue, he said proudly when they arrived. Again, Bluebell sang. With the very first note, an astonished crowd began to gather. Wonderful, they whispered, magnificent. No one had ever heard such magical songs before. They gave everyone goosebumps. At dusk, Swenson said he and Bluebell had to go home. Please, Mr. Swenson, the mayor urged, will you bring your amazing cow to the music hall on Saturday? We must hear her again. Swenson looked at Bluebell. My pleasure, she replied. Here she is singing from the back of the wagon, the hay wagon, to this crowd of people. And here is the notice in the newspaper, Swenson's cow Bluebell to sing at Music Hall on Saturday. I pay a ticket to go see a cow sing on stage. News of Bluebell swept all through the town. The mayor wrote his brother, a talent agent named Big Eddie in Duluth. Incredible, he said, come quick. Big Eddie did just that. On Saturday, watching as Bluebell dazzled her audience, Big Eddie couldn't believe his good fortune. Who would expect such a voice from a stupid cow, he thought. Oh. As the curtain closed, Big Eddie rushed to meet Swenson and Bluebell. Come with me, he said. I'll make you rich. You'll see the world. Bluebell was speechless. First the concert the applause, and now this, the chance of a lifetime. It might be fun to travel, she finally whispered. We sure could use the extra money, Swenson added. We could only, we could be gone only a little while, they said together, about a month. Sure, Big Eddie quickly agreed, whatever you say. Does he look like a very trustworthy man? Not particularly. Bags packed, the threesome left the Chicago left for Chicago the next day. Big Eddie took charge immediately. We have to do something about the way you look, he said to Bluebell. No highbrow theater is going to welcome a fat country cow. In Chicago, he took her to a dressmaker. Bluebell had never worn a dress before, or a hat, or shoes. These shoes feel a little tight, Bluebell said, wincing. Maybe my hooves could just be shined. Look, cow, Big Eddie sneered. We do things my way. Then he smiled and said, I'm going to make you a star. Bluebell and Swenson felt very far away from home.
Everything happened just the way Big Eddie said it would. Bluebell sang in concert halls, theaters, and auditoriums, at parties, street fairs, and department stores. She sang anywhere Big Eddie could get people to pay money to hear her sing. Weeks passed. Wherever they went, crowds gathered. Reporters followed them endlessly. There was no doubt that Bluebell was a star. Look, she must be at Radio City Music Hall or Carnegie. Wow. Look at all those people. From Chicago, they traveled to Philadelphia and then to New York. As their journey away from the farm grew to months, Bluebell and Swenson became homesick. Now, napping, Bluebell dreamed about the farm fields, fresh and sunny. She sleepily switched her tail to brush away the lazy flies. Swenson, too, was weary. He missed his wife, Hazel, and taking care of the animals. He found himself looking for farming articles in the local newspapers. There's Bluebell sleeping on a hay bed and then a blanket over her. She's dreaming. One night, Bluebell and Swenson went to see Big Eddie. We've traveled much longer than a month, Swenson said. We must go home now. Big Eddie's face turned red. After all I've done for you, he shouted, you can't quit now. I have plans, big plans. <gasps> How rude. Bluebell and Swenson didn't know what to do. They had never seen Big Eddie so angry. Okay, Bluebell said at last, one more month, then we have to go home. Big Eddie laughed. Sure, he said, whatever you say. You think he's fibbing? From New York, they traveled to Boston with stops along the way. So many concerts made Bluebell even more famous and even more tired. Now each dress she wore started new fashion trends. Every song she sang became a hit, and the more money Big Eddie made, the greedier he became. More, more. Don't worry, Blue, Swenson would say each night. We'll be home soon. Big Eddie promised. And there they are going through, going past farmlands and crowds, and there they are on the trains. They don't have trains like that anymore. Um, <laughs> they should. At the end of the month, Swenson and Bluebell went to remind Big Eddie that it was time to go home. From outside his door, they heard him speaking loudly on the phone. Don't worry, he was saying. The cow and her stupid friend won't be a problem. <gasps> They'll keep touring as long as I say so. I'll never let them go. Big Eddie's laugh was mean and nasty. Bluebell and Swenson tiptoed back to their room. We're going to have to sneak out and buy our tickets for home, Bluebell said at last, before Big Eddie can stop us. Swenson turned white, but Blue, he said, we don't have enough money. Big Eddie hasn't paid us a cent. And Bluebell sat down to think. Here they are listening at the door. Did you ever listen at a door to hear what people were saying on the other side? The following morning, Bluebell met Big Eddie for breakfast. I've been thinking, Ed, Bluebell said. This concert life is great. I don't ever want to quit. Big Eddie had never looked happier. At last, just see things my way, he replied. Bluebell smiled sweetly. I have a great plan, she said. That should make us both a lot of money. Big Eddie leaned forward to listen. The first thing we do is go back to Swenson's farm, Bluebell whispered. Ooh, they're having breakfast in a fancy hotel. Look what's coming for Bluebell, a plate of hay. 
The next day, Bluebell's upcoming visit to her home was big, big news. Big Eddie was quoted for the details. After allowing reporters to tour the farm, Miss Bluebell would reveal a long list of concerts planned for the West Coast. What a terrific idea she had, Big Eddie muttered. With all this publicity, the West Coast tickets will be sold out and I'll be even richer. There's Bluebell and Big Eddie and Swen leaving the hotel on a red carpet and getting into a taxi. When Swenson, Bluebell, and Big Eddie finally arrived at the farm, reporters were waiting. Big Eddie excitedly rushed to meet them. In the hubbub, Bluebell silently slipped away. As Big Eddie tried to organize the crowd, people called out, We want to talk to Bluebell. Where is she? Big Eddie looked around. Then he saw Swenson pointing to the barn. What is she doing there, he asked angrily. She's supposed to be here, right here, ready for pictures. Big Eddie marched over and opened the barn door. Bluebell, he shouted, Bluebell. Big Eddie walked inside. A sea of black and white cows stared back at him. She's not here, Big Eddie called out, but then he saw something on the ground. It was a dress, a hat, and shoes. Big Eddie looked again at the crowd of cows. He tried to laugh. Stop fooling around, Blue, he said. Come on out. There was no, no answer. They do all look the same, but here's the thing. Farmers can tell their cows apart. By this time, Swenson, Hazel, and a group of reporters were at the door. These cows all look the same to me, Big Eddie yelled. Which one is she? Swenson said he didn't know. Now Big Eddie was desperate. Okay, he shouted, all you cows line up. The cows did as they were told. Big Eddie marched by them one by one. Sing, he commanded. Moo, each cow sang. When Bluebell's turn came, Swenson held his breath. Bluebell paused and opened her mouth. Out came a gloriously ear-splitting moo. Can you move for Bluebell? Big Eddie didn't give her a second glance. Can we all sing moo? Moo. After a few days, Big Eddie gave up and went back to Duluth. Bluebell, of course, continued her singing. She performed for her friends on the farm and taught the other cows how to sing as well. Those cows taught their children and their grandchildren, but first they would tell the story of Bluebell, Swenson, and Big Eddie. Then they would give this advice. When you sing, go out in the field in the shade of a large tree. No one will suspect a thing. On, a, on quiet summer days, when the breeze carries sound, you may hear them singing still. That's a nice summertime activity. Go out and sit under a tree and sing. I think I'm going to try that. We should start a club that does that. Wouldn't that be fun? I'm getting excited about that idea. All right. Ooh. <sighs> ready? Let's get ready for bed. This is the way we wash our face, wash our face, wash our face. This is the way we wash our face before we go to bed. This is the way we brush our teeth, brush our teeth, brush our teeth. This is the way we brush our teeth before we go to bed. This is the way we comb our hair, comb our hair, comb our hair. This is the way we comb our hair before we go to bed. This is the way we blow a kiss, blow a kiss, blow a kiss. This is the way we blow a kiss before we go to bed. Yep, day is done. Day is done, gone the sun. From the land, from the hills, 
from the sky. All is well, safely rest, sleep is nigh. Do you go to sleep like that? Do you put your hands under your, your face and go to sleep? Or do you just bunch your pillow up around you? Whatever, sleep is nearby. And who comes out to watch us uh, as we sleep? Yep, Twinkle. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. Ooh, I'm thinking of a good wish. Woo, you make a wish too. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Good night, Twinkle. Thank you for watching over us. And uh, Twinkle will probably go to bed before we wake up, because when the sun comes out, Twinkle goes to bed. Okay, so, oh, I can't wait to read this book to you. It's called Brief Thief by Michael... Mikhail Escoffier and illustrated by Christy Giacomo. Wow. Brief thief. Do you see, do you know what briefs are? They're underpants, boys' underpants. Um, not to be confused, some boys wear boxer shorts and some boys wear briefs. Those are briefs. Uh, this is published by Enchanted Lion Books in New York City. So, Brief Thief, an underpants thief, is what this story is about. You're going to love it. This morning, Leon enjoyed his breakfast. There's Leon the lizard. Oh, he's forking up some flies. Blah. Then he sunned himself on a big rock. And now Leon has to go poo. <laughs> it happens. He finds a nice tree to hide behind. Here he is hiding behind the tree to poo. But when he's done, he realizes something. Oh, look at that. There's no toilet paper. Look, the roll is empty. No paper. Leon looks around for something to use. Leaves? Nah, they're too prickly. Grass? No, that will be too messy. But wait, those old underpants here will do the trick. They're old underpants hanging in the tree. They might belong to someone, but who would come all the way up here? Anyway, they're full of holes. Leon finishes his business, wiping himself. Then he throws the underpants into the bushes and goes back to his rock. Hey, who do you think you are? Huh? What? Who said that? Yeah, you there. You think I didn't see that? Is it the mushrooms talking? Leon looks around. No one in sight. He's got his binoculars. Anybody there? It's me, your conscience. My conscience? What's that? I'm the little voice you hear inside your head wherever you get up to something naughty. But I didn't do anything. Are you sure? 100% sure? Cross your heart, sure. Well, there were those underpants I used. Aha, uh -huh. now we're getting somewhere. Since when are we allowed to touch other people's things? What do they teach you in school anyway? It was just an old pair of underpants full of holes. I thought they'd been thrown away. Oh, you thought that, did you? But did you also think that maybe the owner of those underpants 
could have lost them, or that maybe someone stole them from him, or that maybe, just maybe, he had washed them and gone off for a walk in the woods while they were hanging out in the sun to dry. <gasps> Leon has a funny feeling the little voice is right. You know what you need to do now? Go on, scrub, like you mean it. I don't want to see a single trace left. And when you're finished, hang them up to dry and get lost. You sneaky little lizard. Look who's talking. It's a bunny rabbit. It's kind of got a superhero cape on. Old underpants full of holes indeed. All right. The rabbit took the underpants now that they're dry. And he put them on. So the leg holes became holes for his ears. And then he cut two little holes for his eyes. And they became his mask. Super Rabbit to the rescue! The end. Don't you just love that story? Oh, I love it. I'm so glad to have shared that with you. And I want to remind you, you could come to the library and borrow these books and um, also come in for some story times. Uh, we have story times Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all at 1030. And if you want to see me, I do a Wednesday story time. And Miss Kathy does Tuesday, and Miss Anita does Thursday. So come by. We also have a, this beautiful room where uh, we set up trains and uh, a dollhouse and puppets to play with on special days. All righty. skid a rink a dinky dink skid a rinky do I love you. skid a rink a dinky dink Get on my rinky do. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Oh, skid on my rink a dinky dink. Skid on my rinky do. I love you. Cha cha cha. Everybody loves that song. Um, we're going to sing one more song, and uh, we haven't done this in a little while, so let's have a reminder. When you're blinking your eyes, it's blinking both eyes. Winking an eye means winking one eye, and nodding your head, nod, nod, like you're saying yes, but sometimes, sometimes when you're falling asleep, your head nods. That's the last thing that happens before you fall asleep or your eyes blink, trying to keep your eyes open. All right. And then at the end of the song, we're going to take three deep breaths in through your nose and blow it out through your mouth. Okay. And you will be surprised how that relaxes you down for sleep. Ready? If you're sleepy and you know it, blink your eyes, blink, blink. If you're sleepy and you know it, blink your eyes, blink, blink. If you're sleepy and you know it, you will always show it. If you're sleepy and you know it, blink your eyes, blink, blink. If you're sleepy and you know it, wink one eye, wink, wink. If you're sleepy and you know it, wink your eye, wink, wink. If you're sleepy and you know it, you will always show it. If you're sleepy and you know it, Wink your eye, wink, wink. If you're sleepy and you know it, nod your head, nod, nod. If you're sleepy and you know it, nod your head, nod, nod. If you're sleepy and you know it, you will always show it. If you're sleepy and you know it, nod your head, nod, nod. If you're sleepy and you know it, take a deep breath. <sighs> If you're sleepy and you know it, take a deep breath. <sighs> if you're sleepy and you know it, you will always show it. That might make you yawn. 
If you're sleepy and you know it, take a deep breath. <sighs> and now, ooh, I know. Now you could yawn because it'll, it'll make you sleepy. It's time for Lily White's party. And you know what that is. Your bed made up with fresh white sheets. Lily White sheets. Lily White's party. So, go hippity hop to bed. You say, I'd rather stay up instead. When mother says must, there's nothing but just go hippity hop to bed. One last story. I think we're running over time, but I can't help myself. I haven't told stories in a couple of days. <laughs> Sun and Moon have a tea party by Yumi Heo and Naoko Stoop. You know, Sun and Moon come out at different times of the day. Sun comes out in the morning and moon comes out at night. Sometimes the moon takes a different shape or always the moon takes a different shape. Here's Cloud. Cloud is also a character in this story. This is published by Schwartz and Wade Books in New York. One late afternoon, the moon and sun had a tea party. They're resting their cookies on cloud. Ooh, raining down there. Do you know, said moon, what moms and dads do? They get their children ready for bed. She took a sip of tea. Look, here's the children getting ready for bed. Aw. No, they don't, said son. Moms and dads get their children ready for school. Not so, said Moon. Children have to go to sleep. Wrong, replied son. Children have to go to school. Ooh, son's getting red hot angry. They walk down bustling sidewalks and across busy streets. Streets aren't busy, said Moon. They are as dark and as lonely as a moonless sky. Streets are quiet at night. No, no, streets are filled with people, just like the sky is filled with birds, said the sun. How can birds fill the sky, said Moon, when they are always snuggled down in their nests? Rivers. Oh, I'm trying. Oh, here we go. How can birds snuggle down, said Sun, when they are flying over everything? Above rivers like mirrors and wildflowers that blow in the wind. Rivers can only reflect my face, said Moon. Do you ever see light reflected in a river? It's so beautiful. They can reflect mine too, said Sun. <gasps> Whoa, did you ever see sunset over the ocean? Uh, not here in New Jersey. You can see sunrise over the ocean. <laughs> you could see moon over the ocean. But sunset, no, you gotta go to California for that. I'm right and you're wrong, said Moon, putting down her cup. Nope, I'm right and you're wrong, said Sun, putting down his cookie. Just then, Cloud drifted by. What are you two arguing about, he said. And, uh, and so they explained. Moon, you are right, said Cloud, and Sun, you are right too. You must each stay up past your bedtime and you will see. Early the next morning, Sleepy Moon rubbed her eyes and hid behind Cloud. This is what she saw. Moms and dads pouring cereal and pulling on coats, dogs chasing their tails, and trees standing guard in green uniform. Moon exclaimed, how beautiful. 
Even the morning glories are saying good morning. Morning glories are those flowers. All day long, the world was abuzz with activity. Wow, it's beautiful. This is a book you definitely have to look up, at up close. As dusk fell, sleepy sun rubbed his eyes and hid behind cloud. This is what he saw. Moms and dads tucking in blankets and reading stories. Dogs sweetly dreaming and trees standing guard in gray pajamas. Who would have guessed, Sun exclaimed. Even the morning glories are fast asleep. See, some flowers close up at night. They close up, they're open in the day and they close at night. And there's kids getting ready for bed. All night long, the world was very still. The following day, sun thought of moon, and the following night, moon thought of sun. And in the world below, Everything shone in both of their lights. The end. I love, I love that book. Kind of, kind of found it by accident. It's, we have so many books at the library, it's hard, it's hard to look at them all or find them all. So let's row our boat off to dreamland. Ready? Pull on your oars. We're going down a quiet river. Maybe the moon is reflected in the river. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Maybe you're kayaking. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. I wish you sweet dreams. And I'll leave you with my song to you. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Good night and sleep tight and I'll see you next time.